I'm a long time lurker of this thread, and I can't sleep, so I thought I'd share a story that happened to me about a year ago. For backstory, I'm a 30 year old female on the petite side, and I live on the east coast where sunrise isn't until 6.30 to 7 in the winter. And I work opening shifts at Starbucks as a manager, and on these particular shifts, I pick up a girl that I opened with because she lived close to the store and didn't have a car. This takes place at around 4.30 a.m. and it's very, very dark. I'm driving down an empty main road, decently close to the girl's apartment complex, when an old, kinda beat up forest sedan seemingly comes out of nowhere and is behind me. We are the only cars on the road, and I turn on my blinker to turn at a light on the way to the complex, which is in a very dark area of town behind a bunch of offices and developments. I'm about five minutes away, and the first red flag for me is how quickly the car turns on their blinker after I do. They start speeding up a bit, and I speed up, and they match my speed. I get a bad feeling, so I figured I'd take an unexpected turn to lose them and circle back. And as soon as my blinker turns on, so does theirs. Any turn I take, they're taking it as well. I'm freaking out after a few minutes of trying to lose them, so I pull in into a nursing home parking lot, assuming that they'll give up. Well, so do they with no turn signal. Mind you, because they weren't expecting it and they were parked across from me, I see the driver, and it's a woman, probably in her 50s with a small white dog. She looks slightly unkempt but not crazy or out of it, just like a dumpy middle-aged woman. She rolls down her windows, so I roll down mine and ask, Is everything okay? To which she replies in kind of a mumble, I thought you were my friend. She has the same kind of car. Or something along those lines. I've never seen her before, so I say, Okay, I'm not, but no problem. Have a good day. Or whatever. Weird, but okay, fine. So I shrug it off and go on my way. I wasn't too shaken up. If it had been a man, I would have straight up called 911 immediately. As I leave the parking lot, the woman has started following me again. And I'm close to the girl's complex on some very dark roads, and I'm freaking out. She's obviously not quite right, and she wouldn't pull into a big apartment complex parking lot. Well, I was wrong. I'm at a stop sign right before the entrance, crazy lady behind me and all. When I notice a red fox scurry by, this is only important because I strongly believe in signs from the universe, so it was a weird coincidence that I'd see my favorite animal in this moment of terror. I pull into the complex parking lot and crazy lady parks next to me. We were sitting there for a moment, neither of us looking at each other. I lock my doors and roll down my passenger side window halfway, finger on the button in case she gets weird. She rolls down her driver's window and I ask straightforwardly, Why are you following me? She then replies, I'm following you? And then repeats what she said to me at the last parking lot. That she thought I was her friend. It was very strange. Almost scripted. Now I'm feeling very uneasy. Because it's extremely obvious she had been and I know it's smart to mention I'm meeting someone. So I say, well, I'm clearly not, and I'm here to pick up a friend, so I'm not sure what to tell you. I roll up my windows, and she watches me take out my phone and call my employee, to whom I say, hey, come down this second. And she leaves immediately once I'm on the phone. My employee rushes down, and I explain what happened, and we both agree that it's creepy as hell. As we pull out of the complex entrance, the red fox runs in front of my car, causing me to slam on my brakes, stops, and runs off into some woods on the side of the road. I have never forgotten this morning, ever. So, 
crazy lady with a little white dog. Let's never meet again. This happened about four years ago, and I was 20 at that time. The first time I met the guy who would become my grocery store stalker, he was standing outside the store collecting money for the Salvation Army Christmas time donations. Well, I'm a fairly friendly person, so I like to say hi to people who work at places that I frequent to, just to be nice. This guy was a kid around my age, very tall, with a mild resemblance to Lurch from the Adams family, you know, dark circles under dark eyes, short black hair, kind of vacant look in his eyes. I chatted with him for maybe two minutes, just idle chit-chat about the weather and whatnot, nothing particularly memorable or interesting, and then waved goodbye and went home. Little did I know that that single moment would be the start of something that would have me genuinely afraid. About four or five months passed, and I hadn't seen him again. Then, one day, as I was grocery shopping with a friend, as we were chatting, she suddenly got really quiet and kind of recoiled backwards, looking behind me. I turned around to see this guy, who had to be at least six foot four, towering over me, not even eight inches from my body. He said hi, and told me he remembered me from that December, and that I had talked to him, and then he asked for my number. While well, I, being young and never having experienced this type of interaction before, told him I didn't have my number memorized, but that I would write his down and text him later. I kind of half-waved my phone at him, pointing out my at-the-time boyfriend, whose picture was my wallpaper, making a point to say, Oh, look, <laughs> that's my boyfriend! to the guy, hoping he would clue in. But, no luck. He told me his number, which I immediately upon getting, I blocked, without letting him get my phone number. However, what really made my blood run cold was what he said after I put my phone away. He leaned in real close and in a low voice he told me, Whatever I text you is for your eyes only. At this point, I started to feel genuinely uncomfortable, and I said, uh, Yeah, sure. <laughs> ah, nice talking to you, but we gotta get back to shopping. And I grabbed my friend and dragged her off, shooting a panicked look at her and asking why she didn't bail me out. Apparently, he scared her too with his getting so close to me and that she didn't know what to do. I want to make it clear, I'm not exactly a small girl. At 5'8 and solidly built, I can certainly handle myself and I very rarely feel intimidated or small in the presence of anyone, male or female. But this guy made me feel tiny and scared. In the months that would follow, he would make me feel truly frightened. I had hoped that creepy interaction would be the last time I saw him, but that was unfortunately not the case. After the initial meeting with him, saying that creepy thing about his text being for my eyes only, it seemed like I would run into him every single time that I go to that store. No matter what checkout lane I was in, he always seemed to appear at the end of it when I was finished shopping. And every time I was in the store, I would notice him out of the corner of my eye watching me, no matter what area I was in. One time, I even caught him following me out of my car. At that point, I was scared and decided to say something to the managers. After letting the managers know what was going on, they assured me that they would tell him not to talk to me. After that, he wouldn't speak to me but I would continue to see him following me around the store at a distance every time that I went up there. It got so bad that I felt so frightened that I started to be afraid to go to that store at all. But I'm one of those stubborn people 
who refuses to be intimidated by someone to the point where I'll stop doing something. I had hoped that maybe it was a coincidence that he was following me. After all, it was a big store. Maybe he just had things to do that just happened to be in the area that I was shopping in. So, I started to pay close attention to my surroundings. Once I started really paying attention, I realized that every single time I was up there, I would constantly notice him in the areas of the store I was in. During my last encounter with him, I went up to the store to grab just two or three items that I needed for dinner that night, and I first saw him standing outside the store when I got there. With his back to me, I quickly ran inside, hoping he didn't see me. Well, unfortunately, a few minutes later, I saw him at the very back of the store and items in hand. I immediately made a beeline towards the front. As soon as I got near the checkout, I ducked behind one of the shelf displays and watched carefully at the front of the store to see if he would appear, and he did. I watched as he looked up and down the checkout, and when he didn't see me there, I saw him step outside. At this point, I quickly ran into the nearest open cashier, rang up my items, and stuck my head out the door to look for him. I didn't see him there immediately, so I started trying to make my way back to where I was parked. I had parked a ways away, near the side of the store where a bunch of other small stores and restaurants were lined up, and as I was walking towards my car, I realized I saw him standing by the entrance that I had first entered the store through and ducked behind a pillar immediately, hoping he didn't see me. I watched carefully from behind the pillar as he scanned the parking lot and he obviously couldn't find me. After a minute or two, he started to walk towards the direction of the parking lot in front of the store. And so, I took that opportunity to make a run for it to my car. And as soon as he was far away enough, that I felt safe. As soon as I got into my car, I locked the doors. And to my horror, when I looked up, he was standing there, about 15 feet away from my car, with a shopping cart in front of him. I knew he followed me, and he knew that I knew. I fully believed that he had chased after me, and when I made it to my car, he grabbed the nearest cart to make it look like he was collecting them from the parking lot. I remember just feeling absolutely terrified at that moment. I went home, and immediately told my grandfather what had happened. I began crying and shaking, and my grandfather told me to get in the car as we were going to settle this. He and I drove up to the store in his car, and he walked me into the store and demanded we spoke with the managers immediately, both of them. When the managers arrived at customer service, he asked me to tell them what had been happening, and demanded that they would ensure he left me alone or that he would involve the police. The manager swore up and down that they would take care of it, but as far as I know, he wasn't fired immediately, because my friend, who first encountered him with me when this whole thing began, told me that he would see him from time to time when she was there by herself, but that any time I went with her, she would never see him. I fully believe he knew whenever I was there, only this time, instead of stalking me, he avoided me. Eventually, everyone who knew the situation stopped seeing him there, so I think he might have gotten fired or moved on from that store. Well, either way, I haven't had any issues since, but I have never in my life felt so afraid of another human being as I did that day seeing him make eye contact with me in the parking lot as I locked my car doors. It still creeps me out to think he was watching me so closely every time that I enter the store and that he could easily avoid or follow me whenever he wanted. So, to the guy who stalked me every time I went grocery shopping for four months straight, let's never meet again.
So this is my first post here. It's long, but a scary experience from 15 years ago. I'm a 29-year-old female now. So anyway, I'm not from the US. I'm from a smaller country. And when I was 14, I got a missed call off a number that I didn't recognize one day. Being 14, I never called, only text. So I asked this number who it was and etc. The reply I got was they had called the wrong number by mistake. No big deal, right? Except they started to try text me things like how are you and other questions. I was naive and played along when I was bored. I made up a fake name and even sent him a fake photo of some random girl on the internet just because he bugged me so much and I didn't want him to know me because, you know, stranger danger and all that, but told them that I was 14. He never called me again and I had no intention in calling him, so we just texted here and there when he told me he was 17. He was very intense in terms of telling me how I was nice for him and he was so lucky to text me. I was never the mushy type and it always seemed like a cheesy film scene when he went on like this. But he was very persistent and I could get up to a hundred messages a day and I might reply to twenty of them. I see no reason to be worried. Until one day, I told my friend about this guy I was texting and we decided to prank call him. And this guy answered, who sounded at least my dad's age. We freaked out, and I stopped texting him. He figured out it was me who called him because of my sudden ghosting. He put two and two together. And to this day, I don't know how. It's not like today where tracking is somewhat easier, especially since I gave this guy a fake name and my phone number wasn't attached to any of my social medias back then. I told him the part of the country that I lived in, but not what town or any other details. He kept calling me and calling me, and of course, I ignored him. Then one day in school, me and the friend that prank called him got several messages. Just a note, when she prank called him, we forgot to put her number on private. So, we had missed calls asking us where we were, did we like him, telling her to tell me to come meet him, and it was so intense. She obviously freaked out as much as I did, then even more so when he sent us both a picture of our school. We freaked out. There are six schools in our town, and how he got the right one, I will never know. We stayed after school to study in fear that he was outside. My math teacher was a family friend and I waited for her to come around to ask for a ride home for us. We went to my house, turned on our phones to a crazy amount of messages, all saying he would meet me one day and that he loved me and he told us that he traveled for hours and couldn't understand why we didn't come out to say hi. I was petrified to tell my mother so we decided to ditch our phone numbers get new phone numbers, and never utter a word of it again. For the next few weeks, I lived in a world of constant fear and anxiety. I couldn't walk alone, even though I knew it was probably impossible for him to know who I really was. But in the end, I told my mother and went to the police because I knew this guy had bad intentions. The phone number I had for him was a burner phone basically, that's what I think it's called in the US. It had no details attached to it and impossible to really look into it any further. Nonetheless, we made a statement and that was it. So yeah, the man pretending to be a 17-year-old boy who drove 4 hours to meet a 14-year-old girl. Let's never, ever, ever meet. <laughs> This story takes place around 2009. I had just moved to South Carolina from the PNW region. A little bit of a backstory. I had just turned 21 and was working a full-time job in the medical field and had absolutely no friends since I was new to the area. 
one night, I got bored, and I decided I was going to put myself out there. So I drove from my tiny town to Columbia. It's about a 40-minute drive, but I knew that's where all the good clubs and bars were. I was specifically looking for gay-friendly spots, and I found myself downtown looking for a club that was no longer there, though the internet said it was. Disappointed, I talked with this lady outside a club across the street. She told me about a chill, laid-back bar with karaoke in West Columbia. Sounds great, I thought. She gave me directions, and I headed that way. I passed by a gas station on my way to buy a soda and asked the lady if she knew whether or not I was in the right area. It appears that I was, and I drove about five or six blocks until I made it there. Now, I'm not the life of the party and somewhat introverted. I was quite nervous my whole time there. I talked with a couple for a bit that was from the area and I ordered a margarita and smoked my cigarettes watching a Katy Perry drag show. This man walks in, about 5 foot 9, roughly 200 pounds, dark skin, goatee, wearing a white hoodie, jeans and a red hat. He sits next to me and winks. He orders his drinks, then asks me for a cigarette. Sure, I said. I asked him how he was doing and if he was from around the area. His answers were short, and I'm feeling kind of awkward at this point, so I just take it as a he's not too interested. I turn my stool and continue watching the drag show. This is when the vibe completely changes. I feel his warm breath in my ear whispering, meet me out back by my car. With that, he gets up and leaves. Now, I'm not very sexually experienced at that point in my life and certainly not going to blow some stranger in his car in a parking lot. He didn't even have much to say in the first place. I stayed for about 20 more minutes and it seemed like there wasn't much of anyone else there my age and I didn't seem to be making headway as everyone there seemed to be with someone and I was alone. I figured... That was about as much as a night out as I was having. As I'm leaving the bar and entering my car, I see headlights flash from behind me. A figure arose from the car. It's that guy. He throws his arms up and he starts running towards me. I'm not fucking around. I put my 1992 Corolla in drive and sped it on out of there. I remember all the lights were green, which I thought was great, Seeing as I was able to get away from the area fast, but oh no, he's right behind me, and he continues to follow me. I come up upon that gas station I was at earlier in the night, and I see a cop car parked outside of it, so I pulled in and parked. Of course, dude at the bar did too. He parked right beside me. I got out and went inside to tell the police officer who followed me from the bar and I was feeling uneasy from it. He went outside and found the guy start to pull out of the parking spot. He waved him down, and as a police backup car pulls into the gas station, they walk over to get a statement. Turns out the guy had an expired license and a warrant out for his arrest. When they frisk him, he had a hunting knife on him. I remember the disturbing look he gave me as they cuffed him. I couldn't believe it. I left, and I was completely lost, again. This time, I'm distraught, so I took forever to get home. Had I got in the car with him, who knows what could have happened. So guy at the bar, let's not meet again. Hi, thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it. If you want to send me a story to read, feel free to do so. My email is in the description of the video. And if you want to follow me on my social media, just to get updates or maybe to talk, the links and info for my Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram accounts are also in the description. And finally, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And turn that bell on to be notified for upcoming surprises. And remember, 
your fear feeds me. <laughs> 